Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. So today's video is all about my experience participating in my very first online speed puzzling competition. So the competition was run by the UK Jigsaw Puzzle Association, which is a group that's still in its infancy, but it is growing fast. I'm going to leave links to their Facebook page and their Instagram and also their website in the description below. If you enjoy speed puzzling or even social puzzling, events and you are in the UK, I would definitely recommend that you go and check them out. Especially on Facebook, you'll find out all about what's up and coming and discover all kinds of puzzling events growing across the UK. But moving on to this competition, it took place via Zoom and it was on Easter Sunday the 31st of March. It was all really well organised, my puzzle came in plenty of time a couple of weeks before the actual event and it was wrapped up in a parcel bag that said in red lettering UK JPA competition do not open. All I knew at this point was that it was a 500 piece Ravensburger puzzle and nearer to the time I got emails reminding me about the event and also telling me what time the Zoom room was going to be open and a password to get in. So with the knowledge that I was going to be building a 500 piece Ravensburger puzzle, I set to buying some puzzles to practice on. So here I've got a wee mini puzzle haul for you. I'm going to show you which ones I bought for practicing on. So I got this one. This is an evening in Paris. I also got this one. Uh, which is called Zebras at the Waterhole. Then I also got this one, which is called Manatee Moments. I got this one. This one's called Perfect Peace. Purr as in like the sound a cat makes, perfect. And it does have a cat on it as well. And I also got this one. It's called Golden Solar System. I also had the Lupin's puzzle, which I could use to practice on, and I had Summer Thunderstorm, which were both puzzles used in the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships last year. Now, I have done four of these puzzles up to now. I've done Lupin's, I've done the Summer Thunderstorm, I've done An Evening in Paris, and I have done Zebras at the Waterhole. And I actually popped a speed puzzling practice video uh, up on that um, just over a week ago. So if you haven't seen that yet, go give it a look. I'm going to link it in my description for you. So I'd signed up. I had my Zoom room password. I had practiced my 500 piece Ravensburger puzzles. All I needed now was to figure what setup I was going to use in my puzzle room to try and capture the whole experience for you. It was a multi device setup. <laughs> My Canon camera, as usual, filmed the time lapse, which I will show you shortly. And my phone was used to have the Zoom call on. Of course, the organiser Annika, she had to be able to see my puzzling area. So the phone was mounted up high on this side on my gooseneck uh, stand, which is just over here. It's all kind of folded up at the moment, but it's a flexible stand and I popped my phone at the top. It's really handy for mobile recording. I actually took this to Worlds with me. So my phone was on there attached to my puzzle board over there and you could see my whole puzzling area. I tried to get my laptop webcam set up over on this side to try and record some real time footage of the event. However, I could not get it to work for love nor money. So I gave up on that and I had my iPad on this side, not recording, but with the timer on it. Luckily, the UK JPA were gracious enough to allow me to use some of the footage from the Zoom call recording. So I do have some real time footage. It's much more generalised because obviously the organisers were looking at everybody, not just focused on me, but I do have some footage from that that I can show you. So I'd like to thank the UK Jigsaw Puzzle Association for allowing me to use that in this video. So surrounded by various electronic devices and actually sweating because it was a really warm day, I was quite nervous and I had all the heat coming from all these various electronic devices. I sat and waited for it to start. There were a few teething problems while we waited for people to join the call and sort out some audio and visual 
issues, um, but everybody got set up eventually and we were ready to rock and roll. Oh, and just to let you know, there were around about 30 participants. So it was pretty informal, so I needn't have been nervous at all. And it was also a charity event. So I'm going to switch over here to some of the Zoom footage where Annika introduces the event and James, another member of the UKJPA, a participant at the Worlds last year and the creator of this lovely UKJPA logo, then tells us a little bit about the charity, the Longfield Community Hospice. So here is the footage from that. Um, well, first of all, welcome everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining on Easter Sunday. Uh, it's really exciting now this is happening and I see you all there with your uh, puzzles. Um, so I want to get you started as soon as possible. Just before we start, uh, I just want to thank Ravensburger for providing the puzzles for the event. This has allowed us to maximize the amount uh, that we can give to Longfield, the charity that we're fundraising for today. Uh, from Longfield, we have James Nichols, who's just going to jump on now and say a, a couple of words for us. Go ahead, James. So I just firstly wanted to thank Annika and Joni and anybody else and Jason who've been involved for setting up today. Um, just let you know, Longfield is a, a hospice-based uh, charity, a host charity based in Gloucestershire, uh, principally does hospice at home and last year provided free uh, end-of-life care for over 1,500 people. Um, it basically raises money through its charity shops and events. So this is just terrific and helps them to continue doing their work. So I think we've got about £450 raised for them, which is a, an awesome amount. So thank you all again for being there. Thank you, James. Okay, so that being all done, Annika then instructed us to remove the outer layer of packaging from the puzzle. And I am so glad because my reaction was actually caught on Zoom when I opened the packaging. I will show you that shortly. But first, let me just remind you of the puzzles that I practiced in my recent bead puzzling practice video prior to this event, just days before, I did Lupins, I did Summer Thunderstorm, I did An Evening in Paris, and I did Zebras at the Waterhole. Here's the footage. Let's go ahead and go open your puzzle, just the postage layer. <laughs> Let's just film this one. Yep, I somehow managed to pull it off again. <laughs> I got zebras at the waterhole. <laughs> now, when I say pull it off again, I will explain what I mean by that just a little in case you, um, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so in all of my many, many practices in the months leading up to the worlds last year, I practiced on no less than four of the puzzles that actually came up at the worlds and two of those puzzles were actually puzzles that i then did again <laughs> i'd done the new york postcard puzzle i'd done the evening in pisa puzzle i had done the ocean circle of colors puzzle which was my semi-final round puzzle for individuals and i had done the colorful underwater creatures puzzle which was mine and Juby's pears puzzle. So yeah, again, I had pulled a puzzle out that I had just recently practiced. That was obviously handy, but it was also fortuitous because of all the puzzles that I practiced in that most recent video that I did, it was the only one where I did a full sort on it. The rest I did full flip. So I was glad that I had the opportunity now to do it again and try the full flip method on it, which is something I wanted to do. So that's what I did. I full flipped the zebra puzzle. Here is the footage of my build.
So this was a social speed puzzling event. So therefore, there were some people who did it solo. Most, most people did it solo, but some did it as pairs and a couple of um, people did it as teams. The first finishers were Nicola Thomas and her pair's partner. Now, apologies ahead of time. I do not know all of the names of the people that participated. I just know one name from the list of results. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of Nicola's pair's partner, but I do know, however, that Nicola was at Worlds last year and she finished the ocean puzzle five minutes faster than I did. Anyway, I was puzzling away and I was a wee bit shocked at the 40 minutes and 16 second finish. <laughs> that was the time they did it in uh, because, you know, this was a really tough puzzle. But then I realised that, that they were doing it as a pair, so it made just a little bit more sense that they would maybe do it just a wee bit faster than I was managing it, which was, you know, just suddenly felt really slow. <laughs> but still, as a pair, that was an incredible time for this puzzle. I really did not find this puzzle easy, even the second time through. The first solo finisher finished in an incredible time. That was Kathy Glenn, who finished it in 50 minutes and 31 seconds. So, so fast. Third place was Helen Savin. I hope I've pronounced that right. And that was another name I recognised from Worlds last year. Helen was in the same group as me for the preliminary individual rounds. We both got that Paris puzzle. And actually, we were very close to being next to each other on the rankings table. She finished the puzzle very close behind Cathy at a time of 52 minutes and 21 seconds. Overall, I came in ninth with a time of one hour and 18 minutes. There were two pairs and one team ahead of me. So I guess you could say that out of all the solo participants, then I came in sixth. I was happy with that and I was so impressed with the times of the winners. So here is some footage of my WeChat with Annika after I had finished the puzzle. Hey, Vicky. Hello. So. We just saw your Facebook post that you just practiced this puzzle. How long ago did you do it? I did it about three days ago. <laughs> and how was your time in comparison? It's like, I've got two now, but it's like over there. Um, I, faster. Faster? This one, yeah, 10 minutes faster. Oh, oh that's huge. Congratulations. Oh, so, yeah, but those air bridges still got me again. <laughs> really I, saw you went, I saw you went for the shape sort. Yeah, towards the end, I just, yeah. I would have just been staring at the pieces otherwise, yeah. and then panic, so <laughs> I have to shake yeah, That was really lucky that you just happened to practice this puzzle a few days ago. <laughs> I, I seem to have a knack for, do, for doing, I, I don't, I'm going to have to see if I can predict what comes up. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should. Um, and this was your first online comp, wasn't it? Yes. And yeah. How did it go for you? Do you enjoy it? Would you do I it did. again? I did. I um, yeah, I would definitely do it again. I would definitely do it again. I I was just I was sort of panicked that you know something might not work in the process, like Zoom or something. But um, I think it all went really well, so I was, I was really chuffed. Have you got any advice for those that are still working through their puzzle? Give them some encouragement, some strategies. Uh, don't panic. I, I get I get really in stuck in my head and I start to think, oh, it's, it's going badly. Don't panic, relax, enjoy, shape, sort if you need to. And yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Vicky. It's great to see you again. You too. So yes, I had finished it 10 minutes faster than the previous speed run that I'd done. And I was really pleased with that improvement. But the only thing is because I'd done it so soon afterwards, I wasn't sure how much of the improvement was related to the method I used and how much of it was related to the fact that I was just more familiar with it. I do know that in both cases, I struggled with those zebras. They really slowed me down a lot. I did them last on both speed runs and I also shape sorted the zebra on both speed runs and and both times when I'd shape sorted I really became confused by those stripes the stripes seemed to take over my focus uh, and I, I lost sight of the shapes of the pieces at times I wonder if maybe in hindsight perhaps a slightly more detailed organization of the zebra pieces would have been better 
where I could separate them perhaps into wider, less densely packed stripes, you know, ones that were more spread out, as opposed to, you know, the, the narrower kind of thinner stripes that were closer together. That might have been a good thing to do to separate those out and just make the piles a bit more small, a bit smaller and more manageable. I think, you know, that might have been a good idea. But anyway, I'd finished my puzzle, so I hung around for a wee bit after I had done, checked out how some of the others were doing, but there was still a good bit of time left on the Zoom call, so after a wee while I just muted the call and I went and got on with a few bits and bobs in the flat. I kept checking in though and listening to the wee interviews when people had finished. There was definitely a common theme of, yes, the hardest part was those zebras. <laughs> I heard that a lot and I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> One of my members actually suggested to me after my last practice video that I put out on this, that I maybe start at the beginning with the harder sections or with the bigger section of a speed puzzle. The reasoning behind this being that I would typically get fatigued about three quarters of the way through the speed run or two thirds and then by the time I reached the big sections I'd been going great and then slowed right down on the harder bit the bigger sections and then I would start to get a wee bit panicked and worried you know that I was slowing down too much so what they suggested was that I maybe do the harder sections first um, when I was still more fresh and less fatigued and that would maybe come together a little bit quicker and then towards the end when I was tired I'd have the easier sections to do which does make a certain amount of sense and I would have liked to have tried that with this puzzle but I didn't dare do that in a competition setting. So I didn't do that, but what I would like to do is take one of these puzzles that I haven't done yet, perhaps the perfect piece one, and do the larger, harder section, something like the cat. Animal fur is hard, that does look like a difficult part of that puzzle. It might be interesting to sort the pieces and then do the hard bit first and see how that goes. So I want to thank you for that suggestion. Uh, I think it was Sam that gave me that suggestion. So thank you for that. I will give that a go. Um, and in fact, I will do that right now. So that's it! I loved my first online speed puzzling experience and it was organised and run so, so well. So, so many thanks to all of those involved in organising the event, Annika, Jason, um, Joni and I think her mum who I believe posted out all the puzzles to everybody. I really hope to do another one of these so please keep them coming you guys, it went so, so well. Once again, I'll leave links in the description to the UK JPA information, as well as a link to the Facebook post where they posted all the results. I'm also going to link my previous practice video in the description as well, in case you haven't seen that. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you've got any thoughts on it at all, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. I have extra puzzle content over in my members area, so please consider becoming a member if you love to see that. I'm planning very soon to start doing some live streams with members only live chat. So that's another perk I'm going to be adding soon for the members as well. And my thanks to all my current members who already give me that support. I really do appreciate it. I shall say goodbye for now and I will leave you with some time-lapse footage of my two zebra builds side by side. Happy puzzling and I'll see you next time. Bye!